and uh, you mentioned this could happen again. This summer there has been an awful lot of uh, intelligence officials going on TV talking about the increased threat mm -hmm. in Iraq, and in fact we're sending military mm -hmm. forces back to Iraq. Um, how much has that uh, the threat mongering by the intelligence community uh, an issue and, and a problem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you know, when I say this could happen again, I mean that this next time could look very different, right? 9-11 um, uh, looked very different from uh, anything that had preceded it. So, you know, you can't, just realistically speaking, no matter how good your intelligence is, you're not going to be able to predict every, um, every, every crisis. Uh, the sure thing is that there will be another crisis, mm. and you need policies in place that anticipate um, that that crisis will will take place, and 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 that anticipate the climate that is almost certain uh, to result from that uh, from that crisis. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of threat mongering, a lot of our policies now are answers to the the perceived threat. So it matters that we get the scale of the threat right, and that we identify. Um, uh, you know that we identify threats that are true threats, and that we don't overplay threats that are you know less than mm -hmm. true threats. Um, you know, I, I at the end of the day, I'm a lawyer. I'm not an mm -hmm. you know I'm not an intelligence person, and there's a degree to which we have no choice but to rely on the intelligence community. But you can't help but be uh, uh, skeptical given the record of mm -hmm. the intelligence community over the last ten years. And, and of course, what we found after the first Iraq War or second Iraq War. Uh, was that there was dissent within the intelligence community mm -hmm. about the, the public statements being made, yet that wasn't made public until well after the invasion. What responsibility does the intelligence community have to, to respond to the public need for information rather than just policymakers? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the a lot of this information is, n in my view, needlessly secret. You know, the, 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 the public, there's no reason why ordinary citizens can't make their own judgments about um, the 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 significance of the threat and um, uh, the appropriateness of the policies we've adopted in response to the threat. You know, those kinds of things are the kinds of things that ordinary citizens should be able to to grapple with. That that is complicated by the secrecy surrounding um, uh, the the secrecy needless secrecy uh, around government intelligence. Uh, and around our national security policies more generally. I think that most Americans don't understand, um, certainly don't fully understand, uh, what our national security policies mm -hmm. are and why they are what they are. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's a huge problem. And for you